Hello, let's talk stories. Last video, I talked about the lit RPG genre and the series He Who Fights With Monsters, talking about specifically the first book in a spoiler-free review. The tag's up here somewhere. I always forget where it specifically is. Uh, but I wanted to continue this because the series He Who Fights With Monsters, I read over the course of a couple years, starting in 2020 till currently it's on book 11 of the series. And I just recently picked up another lit RPG series that was highly recommended by several people online. Uh, and that is Dungeon Crawler Carl, which from the onset you think uh, it's like, okay, this is a really weird concept. Why would I read this? And I will say it is one of the most enjoyable reads that I have had uh, in a while, the journey that has taken. So I want to talk a little bit today about Dungeon Crawler Carl, an amazing example of the lit RPG genre. As somebody who does enjoy a variety of books, um, the lit RPG genre has really kind of remained something that has seemed a little kiddish, dumbed down, like, oh, why is that something I would read? It doesn't seem... Uh, that unique. It doesn't seem well thought out. I mean, somebody can just throw together a story. And Dungeon Crawler Carl, although the title itself and the setting and everything is so ridiculous, it is something that makes you think and appreciate and care about characters in such an amazing way. I have not laughed out loud or cared so much about characters um, in a while, laughing out loud almost to the point of it feeling like Discworld. It is a very interesting, <laughs> very interesting series. Uh, Matt Dineman, the author, um, apparently he's a well-known short story author and he's done a lot of different works, but this is his kind of magnum opus, it seems, uh, in this lit RPG genre. I would describe Dungeon Crawler Carl in a way as Sword Art Online meets Squid Game. And if you've seen those two things, that probably makes a little bit of sense. Um, Sword Art Online being these people trapped in a scenario that they have to constantly make their way through gates to get to, to get higher and higher and higher uh, and more leveled up. And Squid Game being just survive. And that is basically what this story is. This quick discussion will be mostly spoiler free, just so you know, because uh, I want to leave this for you to be able to explore and enjoy. I am just going to comment on a few themes and things that just stood out to me and hopefully kind of set the hook a little bit and get you to go read this amazing, uh, this amazing piece. And to be to just all full, uh, full transparency, uh, I have done the audiobooks of this. Um, I wasn't able to find the physical copies and I uh, listened to the audiobook um, driving to work and back and it has been a <laughs> amazing, amazing experience just to throw that out there. Dungeon Crawler Carl takes place at the onset of an alien invasion. Now, uh, main character Carl, um, he's a man who in Seattle in the winter ends up being outside trying to get his ex-girlfriend's cat out of a tree when the alien invasion happens and every single building or roofed structure on earth all of a sudden it describes as if a boot crushed a can gets subsumed into the earth and billions of people are wiped out instantly on earth. Within another minute and shock looking around, Carl is presented with the opportunity to say, hey, welcome to the dungeon. And basically they described that the alien said that Earth failed to, uh, to uh, fulfill and do the paperwork to try to stop getting uh, this happening because nobody knew about it, but why should the aliens care? And what happens then is uh, humanity is given the opportunity to either survive on the surface now with nothing there or to descend into the dungeon which pops up and the aliens have used Earth's resources to create a 18 level dungeon that goes deeper and deeper into the Earth and about 13 million people decide that they will go down and experience this dungeon of survival trying to make it further and further and further into Earth. And what happens is uh, you find out as this, this series goes uh, nothing major, this is all revealed within the first couple chapters, that the aliens are taking out a bit of needed resource, which it ends up only being like a couple truckloads of resource, and it turns out that these invasions are a way of creating a television show and a gambling show for the entire universe to be able to watch as this hapless group of humans uh, who are soft and squishy try to make their way through this dungeon as millions of them die off within a matter of days. 
This dungeon is run by AI, which sometimes it can be futuristic, but in this case is a little more on the fantasy side. There is much, uh, almost like steampunk meets, uh, meets medieval fantasy uh, connections, and Carl becomes, uh, let's just say he uh, becomes very adept at um, range and mass casualties, we'll just say that. Carl, it turns out, is a former Coast Guardsman who is a boat mechanic who has an ex-girlfriend who she did some stuff that led to it, but he also doesn't seem the most confident or the most straightforward. And it is uh, something that as he goes in, you know nothing about him other than that he has this ex and he loves her cat, who is a show cat, who's a Persian cat, uh, who uh, is called Princess Donut. Her whole name is, uh, is way too long to remember, but she just becomes known as Princess Donut. And they go into the dungeon immediately um, they get set upon by goblins and all these things happen. In fact, the goblins initially, the, the uh, Matt Dineman, he describes the goblins as the incels of the dungeon, which he constantly makes these little cultural references that are just amazing and brilliant in the AI, which is uh, <laughs> over the top. And let's just say an AI that controls the dungeon with millions of people's lives at stake, uh, who has a foot fetish. We'll just say that. And the situational humor that is there is, uh, is, is bar none, I would say, equal to Discworld in many ways. If you've ever read Terry Pratchett, um, it is equal to many of that, uh, many of those books. But as Carl goes down, he uh, they find a guild. They narrowly escape. He and Princess Donut, and they find a guild master who kind of reminds you of Master Splinter a little bit. It's a shapeshifter who's uh, who's a drunk who doesn't want to help them at all. Uh, but once he sees that Carl and Princess Donut actually have a little bit of capability or hope, he uh, helps them out a little bit. And as the book goes on, he becomes more confident in helping them. And the series, I won't go into any series stuff, but the series develops in an amazing way. I'll, much later I wanna do a video uh, discussing the series as a whole. Uh, but the uh, Carl and Donut, they, uh, they get some they get some equipment and they get some some help and they run into some things and the AI presents quests and everything and they all of a sudden realize that the universe is watching. And as Carl and Donut, as they go to experience this world, um, I won't go into too much, but let's just say Donut becomes a integral character uh, in this story. And at first I was very questionable about it and let's just say it, uh, it shifts and becomes very much to the point where this dynamic duo uh, carries this book. I will say this book doesn't have a lot of uh, of major characters. There, there's good characters that come along that you care that you learn to care about, but it very much follows Carl and Princess Donut uh, in this story. <laughs> Whoever thought you would use the word Princess Donut in a sentence? But Carl and Princess Donut, they as they go along, they experience. Uh, this dungeon, and one thing to be clear, if you've ever watched Squid Game or Sword, on, or Sword Art Online, uh, this RPG, lit RPG story, very much is based in horror. Uh, the book I talked about last week uh, in the last video, um, He Who Fights With Monsters, touches into the horror realm, uh, but this just goes full bore into a ridiculous horror level uh, with from assassins to demon llamas to mutated hobos with cockroach mouth stuff. It's, it is ridiculous to the point where that is an amazing thing and it's also a horrifying thing that you read it and you just kind of have to suspension of disbelief. Be like, okay, this sounds horrific. It's something straight out of a video game. Uh, that you would see there. Uh, escaping assassins, escaping uh, dimensional demons, uh, learning how to open and get down to the next level before the top level crushes and they are annihilated because that's the way this game show works. You have to make it through one level and make it to the next before the one above is destroyed. Uh, but the story ramps up very slowly in a very typical RPG style story, a very D&D modular style, but it is something that where the story story plot is limited uh it's basically survive right uh it is a story that you see these characters develop you see the world building that takes place and it is an incredible story a couple of the things that i would highlight as being the best about this is the humor as i mentioned is amazing uh the character development is initially minimal but as the series goes on is incredible um, and the plot twist. I will say Matt Dineman does an amazing job with plot twists to make a initially 14 hour 
audiobook, which eventually get up into the 20, 20 plus hours, keeps you on the edge of your seat in many ways and twists the story and takes what seems to be a local survival issue and puts it into the universal scale of being important and mattering. The cultural references are always an amazing thing. And as I said, the horror is something that makes this series incredible in many ways but i also will say in some ways it makes it very much on the on the not negative but on the more difficult listening reading side um i'll also say there's a lot of language a lot of language i don't mind it but at the same time it is something that i would say that it's not for everybody um and then initially there's too few characters but that is something that is solved along the way i would give this a very strong i would say the first book i'm putting it at a b plus uh b plus level so like 4.5 out of 5, uh, B plus as a teacher, B plus, uh, and it was very positively reviewed. Um, I'll say as the series goes on, it gets even better, and I'll do a series review at a much later date, but something that just this book really hammers home is this idea of where is your humanity in the face of unfathomable and indescribable violence and hopelessness? Where is your humanity? Where is your hope? And ultimately then, what are you gonna do about it? And that is something that is very unique in this story and I would just highly recommend if you're interested at all in more of a, a lit RPG adventure journey style story, this is something you need to check out. Um, this man who is surviving in his biker jacket with heart covered boxers and a talking Persian cat. It's ridiculous and I'm here for it all day. Well, that's it for today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you're interested in seeing my uh, last review video on He Who Fights With Monsters, that's going to be up here. YouTube's going to recommend something up here. Uh, thank you for being here and talking stories with me. Um, whether you comment or not, please do. I like talking to you people. Uh, have a great day. God bless. Read a book.